Uh, so have you ever been to a farm before, like a real operating farm? Yes, it's it's well, it's it's an apple orchard that oh, I've been to. I don't know if that's real. Yeah, it is real. It's, it's, they it's have a real. tractor. Yeah. No. What we had was, and I told you, I grew up. We um, there's a, a big orchard in Grand Rapids called uh, Robinette Apple Orchards. Okay. And and we, when I was like in seventh or eighth grade, um, my dad bought the ten most remote acres that they had that they weren't even farming anymore. Oh. And we. He knocked out a few trees, put a house right in the middle of it, and for 10 years we farmed. That. Oh, fun. We brought it all back and um, took out a bunch of trees and replaced them with dwarf trees. And, and when my parents sold that place, um, we were actually producing more bushels per acre than Robin Hunts was. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, we put it all back in shape. We had a in good time. 10 acres. Fun. 10 acres. Yeah. I mean, not, not that they're a whole property, but right. like per, per like, acre. Like, did your mom make a lot of apple pies? Yeah, my grandma mostly. My oh, grandma was. Yum. We used to have we had, awesome we, grandmas. We had we had a few spy trees on the property. A spy and, tree. A, a spies is a a spy is a, a type of apple. Okay. Um, they're very tart, but they're used to cooking a lot, and okay. they're huge. Oh. And my dad kept that one spy tree, so my grandma could cook yeah. with those apples. Oh, cool. And she, they're they're huge to where like. You can make a pie out of like one and a half spy apples. That's all oh. you need. They're, they're humongous, but they're, like I said, they're kind of a cooking apple. If you bit into one, right. they're real tart. Okay. So. Well, I got to give you credit for coming to a farm today. It's quite the attire Thank you, you got. Thank you. You know, this wasn't even on purpose. This was uh, <laughs> by accident. I think on the way over here, I look and say, well, I kind of look like maybe I. You look uh, like a farmer, kind of, dirty maybe a little. little. Bit, so, yeah. Uh, you're going to roll around in the dirt. No, I'm not going to roll around. I'm going to show it to you for God's sake. <laughs> So stand-up comedy up. in a couple hours, and here we are at a farm just gotta, checking stuff out. Right, yeah. So I, you want to get up in here and I, check I, this I do want to get in there. Yeah. I don't want to touch anything because I'm afraid I'm going to slip the clutch. Oh, nah. Gonna you got to turn somebody. it on. This one isn't even on. All right. Let's no, see. this one's not even on. All right. Now, is this one of those situations where you've got a radio, situation. air conditioning? This is one of those things where you're going to be in here all day. Yep. So it's so. fancy. Like oh. looking behind you so that man what is my family doing with these tractors they have some Looks internet like i know show more I about know. this thing already than you do <laughs> hey i've been off the farm for a while i lived here way back in the day now is this uh is this like uh, where's forward i think it's on the side okay i see one two three four there's is a there... red handled thing <laughs> You're always if you push that one thing in my bobber, I think you'd be good. Always be careful <laughs> about the red handle lever. I think that's probably that's probably a good rule, not just in farming, but anything in life. Yeah, yeah. To be, be careful. cautious when you see a red handle. Red handle. Lever. <laughs> so if you were farming, what would be your music you'd listen to? Like, what would you be listening Something to? Something all day. Yeah. To be honest with you, this is probably show my age. I probably like talk radio. Yeah. Like something that nice. makes me think about things. But you want to get tired? No. I mean, you know, the hum of the tractor and you're moving along. Right. I mean, it can be tiring. Um, I would imagine hard rock would get tiring after a yeah, while. Yeah, that's true. You got to have something. Yeah. Easy listening. Yeah. When I was uh, when I was younger, I was a teenager, and my dad had me working the fields more. And I always like to take naps in the afternoon. I, I mean, like to this day, I like to take a nap. Mm -hmm. I love naps. And um, I had all this beeping. All of a sudden, I heard all these horns, and I woke up. <laughs> I was in a tractor, and I had fallen asleep, and I was making a big circle with a plow. <laughs> and I worked up the neighbor's field. <laughs> Where he had planted, like we owed them thousands of dollars. Yeah. Oh, Do you my see? Because I skipped my nap for the day. Yeah. <laughs> you were napping in the tractor. <laughs> so, all like, right? it puts you to sleep that little that, bumpity that bumpity the bump. Yeah, all the day. whole time. Mm -hmm. Now, does this thing vibrate a lot? Um. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just soothing. I I think it's relaxing. White noise in a. Uh, <laughs> I'm pathetic. In an extraordinary I'm so way. So pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> been doing comedy for I've been doing comedy 20 for years yeah so oh I cool so you were headlining and that, yeah good for you so yep so when you got started in comedy what was different about getting started now well now with the internet and with YouTube and everything like that it's a lot easier to get seen and this I, I know I'm gonna sound like the old guy the old but th this this is Teach this us. is truly I think one of the <clears throat> one of the pros of YouTube and all that stuff is the fact that you can you can produce your own stuff, 
You don't necessarily have to be in one of the big cities to, to right. get noticed. You can put stuff out there and you can put content Where are out we? there. But, <laughs> but that's one of the great things mm -hmm. is you can be anywhere. The problem with that is that I don't think I don't think some of the comedians today, some of the young comedians, get up and and get really good at what they're Being doing funny. in front of the right crowds. Mm -hmm. and, and in front and, and by that what I mean is in front of any crowds. Mm -hmm. You know, they kind of get stuck into going to these open mic nights and stuff like that, which is great. You've got to get on stage and you got to get time, but you're always in front of the same people. You're always in front of your buddies. You're always in front mm -hmm. of other open micers. Mm -hmm. And you, you have to figure out, mm -hmm. I, I truly think being in the Midwest is one of the greatest training grounds you can do because you're going to play all different kinds of yeah. crowds. You're going to be in a city in a Grand Rapids or a Detroit mm -hmm. or something like that where you're going to be playing in, you know, packed rooms like that, but you're going to be, you also got to figure out if you could make, 10 people in a hotel bar in the middle of Michigan in Mount laugh. Pleasant laugh. And to me, that's where you figure yeah. out if you're good or not. Right. And there's there's a lot of young comics who don't do that stuff mm -hmm. and they and they rely so much on the social media that mm -hmm. they get in a situation like that and they mm -hmm. get eaten alive. Yeah. They just get eaten yeah. alive. And that's, that's to me, that's the and gym. The, and that's maybe, where you have to find out. And maybe out perhaps who hired them expected more because yeah. they saw more. Right. Yeah. So... Uh, so I think it's a double-edged sword. I think there's great things about what's happening now, but when I was when I started out, even though there was a comedy club in Grand Rapids, Michigan, they, they didn't have an open mic night. Yeah, I had to go to Lansing to Connections in Lansing, which is now closed. Yeah, that was the only place within a reasonable distance that had an open go. mic night, and they had they were a Wednesday through Saturday club, and you called the Monday before that Wednesday at noon. You had it was almost like calling yeah. a radio station yeah. to try to win a prize. To get in, and you you dialed. And they had three five-minute slots before the regular show Aww. on Wednesday night. And sometimes you got a slot and sometimes you didn't. And, and uh, you just started going down there. And my brother would go with me and, and videotape me. And this is the days when you had the big VHS uh -huh. with camcorder. I mean, it was like it was like when you'd see the news on site, you know, this thing was like on his <laughs> shoulder, in the crowd, on his shoulder. With, with the a VH, red light. With the VH ta VHS tape in it. <laughs> Yeah, there was no developing. You just took yeah. that out and then put it in the VCR, <laughs> and that's that's how you taped yourself. Yeah, I mean that yeah. was all you could do. Or <laughs> I can remember I had an old school tape recorder, you know, with a little pop up thing, you know, my, it, <laughs> and I'd bring that on stage with me and hit record, and then you do your stuff. <laughs> oh and, my gosh! And when you're done, you hit. Stop I get weirded and, out about hitting record on my phone, so I'm like, I don't want anybody to see that. So, that's hilarious. Yeah, so uh, that's that's what you had to do. Cool. So it, it, I liked the fact that it was more, it was more raw back mm -hmm, then, and it mm -hmm. forced you to have to Get deal better. with all kinds of different situations. Yeah. So. I, well, I can tell you since producing shows, and that I can tell you if you know Mark Ridley's story, yeah, mine yeah, yeah. mine kind of mirrors that. Honestly, not I'm not trying to kiss, but Mark, hi. Uh, <laughs> Mark used to be my manager. Yeah. Oh, okay. He used to oh, manage yeah. comedians, and he was so one, I Mark, was one of the guys he managed. I heard his whole thing on a couple different podcasts. He's never had the desire to like go out and be a headliner. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, I feel the same exact way. Yeah. I absolutely love working with you guys. It's inspiring, right. and especially those of you that have been around longer. You guys are funnier. Your punchlines are like zigzaggy. You go, you're going here, and then it goes over there. I want to be the best MC that Michigan's ever seen, but followed by the most amazing shows. Yeah, well, that is good. my yeah. whole goal. Yeah. And it's crazy because the more that we get into stuff and the more things that we kind of dip our hands into, I see where some guys think like, oh, what's she up to? Nothing. I just yeah. want to make a bigger audience for yeah. you guys. Like, yeah. honest to and that's great. Honest to goodness. Mark is a great guy to kind of to mimic or, you know, use as a mentor or whatever because he is, you know, Detroit has seen its share of comedy clubs come and go, yep. and he has been he's around right for there. a long time. And the reason he's been around is he does it right. He, yeah. um, you know, he gets great comics in. He treats he treats the comics great. You know, that's one of the things. That's why people want to play there. Yeah. You know, if you're going to come to the Detroit that's area, where that's do, where yeah. you're going to play. Yep. Because you know, um, Mark respects you. The yeah. club respects you. They're going to treat you nicely. Yeah. And make you feel like you know there's right. you have you're value. somebody. I yeah. mean, there's there's a, there are a lot of clubs out there. There's a lot there's a lot of clubs that are great, but there are a lot of clubs out there that you went in and you just you felt like a piece of meat. You yeah. Know, you just felt like. Well, I'm hearing that. Yeah. I, I didn't. Uh, 
I didn't know that was a that was a thing. We have a couple little theater shows, and you know, we try to ask what you guys need backstage yeah. and have a little green room. It's not pretty, but, yeah, but have something. what you need back there. And yep. we have VIPs that come and meet you guys, and you'll be there this summer. I'm really excited yeah, to have you Franklin, out there. Yeah, yeah. and. Um, it's interesting because sometimes the guys are like, man, I just did a show. They shoved me in a dark room, and it was like, we'll tell you when it's your time. Stay yeah. here. Ah, and I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, that's always fun. Well, is it your van out of the way far enough? I have a van. Okay, Where do I have one? All the way up. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good one. All right. Now, the pedals are for what? One for lifting and one for jumping. That's for you to figure out. Same principle, same. Pretty close. Yeah. I'll we'll have one by the end of next week. That's <laughs> <laughs> where you didn't uh, put it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that feels good. Yeah, it's fun. That was a good portion. Fun of the well, you're trying to cover the label. Oh, you? Well, yeah. you can't advertise. I'm not high work. end. I'll try, trust me. I'll there we go. Now, yeah. Bush light. Have you ever had a bush light before? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've been in parking lots before. <laughs> you guys are safe to come up here, no? <laughs> <laughs> the cameras are on. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cut. <laughs>